So my next guest is Rhode Island vet, Rhode Island Veterans of Foreign Wars Senior Vice Commander, Dora Vasquez Halner. Dora told me some amazing things that the VFWs are doing in Rhode Island, and I knew I had to have her on the show. So welcome, Dora. Oh, you're muted. Ben, can you unmute her? There we go. Can you hear me now? Excellent. I can hear you now. Thank you. Uh, first, Deb, I want to thank you for inviting me this morning to participate in this wonderful program. Yes, it is unfortunate that we were not able to physically gather at the Ryan Center, but uh, we are making it happen, and that is the world uh, of moving forward. So on behalf of the Department of Rhode Island VFW, I just wanted to share a few things with you. First of all, what is our mission? And that is to foster camaraderie among all U.S. veterans of overseas conflicts. And our vision, our vision is to ensure that veterans are respected for their service, um, always receive their earned entitlements, and are recognized for the sacrifices that they and their loved ones have made on behalf of this great country. Now, who are we? The Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States is a nonprofit veteran service organization comprised of eligible veterans and military service members from the active guard and reserve forces. We can trace our roots back to 1899 when veterans of the Spanish-American War and the Philippine insurrection founded local organizations to secure rights and benefits for their service. Many arrived home wounded or sick, and there was no medical care or veterans pension for them, and they were left to care for themselves. And so moving forward, uh, they banded together and formed organizations that would eventually become known as the Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States. And at that point, chapters started popping up throughout the United States. And today, our membership stands at more than 1.6 million members of the VFW with its auxiliary with more than 6,129 VFW posts worldwide. When we look at the structure of the VFW, we can start with the post, which would be the equivalent of our towns. Then we move to districts, which is our counties, and department, which is the state level, and then our national level. And our voice has been instrumental in establishing the Veterans Administration, development of the National Cemetery System, the fight for compensation for Vietnam vets exposed to Agent Orange, and for veterans diagnosed with Gulf War Syndrome. In 2008, we won a long fought victory with the passing of a GI Bill for the 21st century. And this gave expanded educational benefits to America's active duty service members and members of the Guard and Reserves fighting in Iraq and Afghanistan. We have also been the driving force behind the Veterans Access and Accountability Act of 2014, which requires hospital care and medical services to be furnished to veterans through agreements with specified non-department of VA facilities if the veterans and continually fight for improved VA medical services for women veterans. We have helped fund numerous memorials throughout our capital. And in 2005, the VFW became the first veterans organization to contribute to building the new Disabled Veterans for Life Memorial, which opened in November of 2010. And in 2015, we became the first supporter of the National Desert Storm War Memorial, which is planned for construction at our nation's capital. 
We have many programs and services that work to support veterans, service members, and their families, as well as communities worldwide. No one does more for veterans than the VFW. Our core values always put the interests of our members first. Treat donors as partners in our cause, promote patriotism, honor military service, ensure the care of veterans and their families, and serve our communities, promote a positive image of the VFW, and respect the diversity of veteran opinions. Now, how do we practice all these items here in Rhode Island? As we look at the VFW in Rhode Island, we have been helping veterans and their families since 1919. We have 23 posts throughout the state, and we represent, excuse me, over 3,500 veterans. <clears throat> excuse me. A little known fact with VFW history in Rhode Island is that the first VFW National Legislative Convention was held here in our state. And if you ever have, <clears throat> excuse me, let me get a sip of water here. <clears throat> okay. Um, if you ever have the chance to go to our department headquarters, which is in Providence across the street from the department, um, state capitol building, excuse me, uh, we have a photo there from this event that shows several World War, World War I veterans and the ladies auxiliary that was taken on the steps of the Providence City Hall. And also, when we look at the legislative side of the House, um, very few people know that one May has been designated as VFW Loyalty Day. And this came about um, originally as Americanization Day in 1921. And it was to counter the communist May 1st celebration of the Russian Revolution. So what do we do on May 1st? We promote patriotism through this resolution that was adopted in 1949. Now, fast forward to the present. How did the Department of Rhode Island respond, react to the current pandemic? Well, throughout our state, Many of our posts rallied the troops to serve our community. And how did we do that? In Portsmouth, in Portsmouth, they constructed over 3,200 masks and they were distributed to such facilities as the Providence VA Medical Center, uh, the Bristol Home, the Portsmouth Emergency Management Service, several nursing homes, the Veterans Association of Bristol County, and other hospitals. So uh, also a small portion of these masks are still being supplied in the event of a second wave. Here in Westerly, where I'm located, um, our Westerly Post provided meals, numerous meals to our National Guard that were providing um, services here in the Westerly area. And they also served a couple of dinners to the Westerly Police Department. Now in Wakefield, Wakefield, what they did is they were shoppers for individuals who could not safely leave their home. And this was done at the Belmont Market. And to date, the hours that have been put in by the Wakefield Post total over 600 hours. And this was done in coordination with the Lions Club and also with the Rotary Club and the Elks Club there at Belmont. As we move to the area of North Kingstown, North Kingstown provided many meals to the Rhode Island National Guard soldiers and airmen. They also provided both breakfast and lunch. Uh, they provided 
face masks to the NK police and also to the Rhode Island State Police. And also uh, what we did throughout the state, numerous posts throughout the state um, contracted several veteran owned food trucks who in turn served free meals to our Rhode Island National Guard soldiers and airmen that were located at the numerous test sites throughout our area. Dora, I want to um, pop in here for a quick second because there's a couple of questions that have come in that I want to make sure that we have time okay. to touch on. Does the, does the VFW help people? Ann Simpson was asking, do you help with the application for survivor benefits? For survivor benefits, what we can do is we have veteran service officers and they have all the required information for survivor benefits. And on the screen, the number that everyone ha is receiving is to our department. And then the department secretary and adjutant will be able to put the individuals in contact with the respective uh, points of contact for those different items. Great. And Sal Sacco had another question. Who is eligible to join the VFW? Is it for all veterans, um, all of the age groups? Okay, that is a really great question. And, you know, I will tell you before I go into that answer is that uh, veterans always ask, well, why should I join a veterans organization? Well, I will tell you that it's strength in numbers be it at the state level or at the national level. When VFW at the national level steps forward and says, um, we are supporting this bill because of 1.6 million veterans and family members, that has a huge impact. And then the same here in Rhode Island, the VFW represents 3,500 veterans. So again, when we go forward to present different issues, that's where the strength in numbers come in. Now, as far as eligibility, eligibility is based on, number one, you must be a U.S. citizen or U.S. national. Number two, um, honorable service. You must have served in the armed forces of the United States and either received a discharge of honorable or general under honorable conditions or be currently serving. And then lastly, service in a war campaign or expedition on foreign soil or in hostile waters. And again, if you are discharged, then this would be proven by your DD-214, your official document that states your discharge status and all your military um, history on that. But if you are still serving, that can be easily verified with your orders, the official documentation that moves you from point A to point B. So that is the eligibility. Wow. So the VFW, is it um, part of the VA system? Is it a nonprofit? Um, how do you, how are your financial, like how do you financially get these monuments going and things like that? Ooh, really good question, Deb. Number one, we are a nonprofit. And mm -hmm. so we rely solely from donations. And every year you will see one of our big uh, fundraisers are the Buddy Poppy. And traditionally the Buddy Poppy, we seek donations on Memorial Day and then again on Veterans Day. Unfortunately, again, because of this year's situation, we were not able to hold our Buddy Poppy um, drive. But I'm hoping that by the time Veterans Day comes around, we will be able to conduct our drive. But again, all of this is fed from donations throughout the year. 
So if people wanted to support your organization, um, say for instance, you were saying that there's monuments and some recognition for our veterans, they can mail in a check if they wanted to, right? Oh my gosh, yes, they could. And that would be greatly appreciated <laughs> because I will tell you that the money also goes directly back to the community in that if there is a veteran in need, for example, they need food on the table or their um they need assistance with oil over the long winter, we will help them out. The family member, we will help them out. So again, the monies go directly back to the community. That's awesome. And Dor um, Director Yarn has joined us. And I know that he is on a very tight time schedule. So this is great. Um, there's another question that did pop up in our chat box and I'll follow up with you on that afterwards so that I can respond to our speaker. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you having time today. I greatly appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much.